What we are, for anyone who doesn't know us, is we're the people that like to help make your problems disappear. The one thing I'm going to warn you about during this presentation is the one thing I want you to remember is smart people can't believe it's this simple. You're not going to believe how easy it is to manage your inventory perfectly every time with no computers. It's, it's so elegant, you can't believe it, but the whole time, if your eyes aren't rolling around going, oh my God, that's so simple, then I'm doing something wrong because it literally is that simple. So a little bit of history on Kanban. We're not experimenting with anyone. <laughs> we got this from uh, Toyota. They've been using it for 70 years, and as far as I know, they're still using it today with the cards. So it works, it works great, and we're going to run through a whole bunch of demos today. And with any luck, by the time this hour is over, you got no Kanban questions. We're going to set you loose in your own businesses, and you're going to rock and roll with all of your inventory. So the first thing we want to run through is actually, uh, I'll find one somewhere. Wow, <laughs> here we go. Uh, we want to run through the card itself, so we're going to flip back over to Lynn, and she's going to just talk about this information because obviously it's too small for you to see. So Lynn, you want to take it over and show everyone what's on this card, and then we'll jump into a demo. Over to you, Lynn. Okay, so I'm just going to share my screen real quick here, and I'm going to show you what a Kanban card looks like. This is our website here with our Kanban card. I'm going to hide the label so it's not so confusing. I'm going to blow up the card here so that you guys can see a Kanban card. So essentially, um, answers where the question is. We have everything on here uh, that you need in order to control the ordering and the stocking of these components. So in this case, uh, we have the item name, the supplier, the item number, where it's stored. So when receiving gets it back in the building, they know where it goes when to reorder, how much to reorder. And then on the back of the card, uh, we have some simple uh, vendor performance tracking data here. So you're gonna print this on a duplex printer, you're gonna laminate it, and then someone's gonna write with a Sharpie on here. You'll be able to see if your vendor's lead time is getting longer or shorter. Uh, just some simple, simple data so here, but we know you have all this data in your ERP system. But in this case, you don't have to go look. Everything you need to manage these uh, uh, these components yeah, is on that, these that cards. Help. And then, of course, if you're Even doing better. this the first time, we have labels here. Now, these labels can be used for where you're stocking the product, but also they can be used as crumb trails. And that's something that Brad's going to explain soon. But that's the basics of the Kanban card. We also have internal and external. This is an internal, meaning we're going to trigger this uh, making this product. If it's an external card, we're going to we're going to trigger the purchasing of this product with the card. I started realizing the power of Kanban one day while I was in the office and I was trying to order a Sharpie, and I wasn't trying to order it. I was actually trying to work, and the person behind me was trying to order the Sharpie, and. They're looking for something to do. And I said, yeah, you know, we need some Sharpies. Can you just order us some Sharpies? And I turn around and I try and get back to work. And they're like, yeah, no problem. They get on the thing. They're like, oh, uh, how many do you need? I'm like, I'm, I don't know, uh, five. Okay, good, five. Oh, um, but if I order seven, it's cheaper. Uh, okay, uh, sure, order seven. Uh, well, what colors do you want? Uh, I don't know what colors. What, when do you want them delivered? The, the questions... Like there was 55 questions around this Sharpie disturbing me the whole time that I was trying to work. So you, I promise you won't realize the power of Kanban until you start doing it and realize that all of those silly little disruptions are like eradicated from your day. So um, the, the no disruptions is huge, but if we could also run around our businesses and see how long people are taking to look for things, I promise you'll, you'd fall out of your chair. You won't believe the amount of money you spend people looking for things. Pardon, Ryan? Oh, Ryan just, he's looking at me like, hey, we're in a factory. Why don't we just simulate that? And I say, okay, uh, it's kind of happening real time. So this is our podium where we do our morning meetings and stuff. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have someone go find that in our compound area. So I'll find someone. Shay, can I borrow you? <laughs> um, can you go into our Kanban area and find a mouse, please? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so we'll, 
So while she's doing that, um, the, my next favorite story is about this screw, this tiny little screw, okay? Inevitably, somebody comes into the office and they're like, hey, uh, I need one of these screws. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, yeah, great. Um, what's it for? Oh, it's for one of our insert knife cutters. All right, great. Um, do you know where we got it? No. Do you know what knife it came off of? No. All right, great. Okay, so I'll put it on my desk and probably will take me five hours to figure out where to get more of these screws. And then at that point, I'm so frustrated, I just buy like 6,000 of them, so I never have to buy them again. But sooner or later, they'll walk back in and I'll be like, well, when do you need it? Well, uh, this is the last one. <laughs> and so this makes me crazy because this is probably a five cent item and we spent hours looking for it. Well now, with a Kanban system in place, someone, well A, it never happens anymore, but if someone came to me and said, I need that screw, I would simply come over to our tool Kanban storage area, I would find the bin with the same screw that's in my hand on our lean labels, I would just pull the bin, one, there's always screws in there now, so we'll never not have this screw, but two, Anyone can buy it. All the information's on the Kanban card. So we have our Kanban quantity taped onto the back. So if we use all of those screws, we go into that, done. Never ever have to think about that screw again. And that is one of the huge powers of Kanban. The other thing is, is it really, as you can see here, and we'll show you upstairs, it really starts forcing organization because you can't just run into a storage room anymore and just throw things wherever you want and you know where they are, but the other 55 people in the place have no clue where to look for anything. So forcing organization is just huge. And then you manage your inventory, at, like especially say with this screw, you manage your inventory at a level that you're comfortable with. You're no longer getting frustrated and you're just buying big amounts or not buying enough based on your consumption rate you always have the perfect amount of inventory. So where'd Shay go? Is she, she, she's standing up there. Like, I don't know, I can't find it. So let's uh, co come on back down here, Shay, and we will. So this is our podium where we usually do our morning meetings and our mouse is here and our crumb trail card is here. So now we hand her a crumb trail and say, please go find that mouse. And we'll just keep going. So one of the other humongous things that people underestimate when it comes to Kanban is <laughs> break time, is the amount of brain power that your purchasers are exuding on a daily basis over absolutely trivial stuff. Like I'm gonna be looking for screws or toilet paper or just, uh, you know, oh, well, <laughs> that didn't take long. So you can see, compared to not having a crumb trail and having a crumb trail is an extraordinary difference. Thank you, Shay. Um, so your purchasers are exuding all of this brain power all day long. That's totally unnecessary. We need to get them focusing on the important stuff, the stuff that doesn't fit within the Kanban window, the custom stuff, the stuff they need to track and follow and really keep their eye on it so that it all goes to plan uh, coming into your building. So Kanban is just gonna eliminate all of the tedious stuff, like literally so you don't have to think about it anymore, which is where we want it to be. Another cool thing that goes away, your accountant will love this because you know they want to know to the penny, but anyway, inventory tr uh, counting. You're always counting inventory, like once or twice a year. I know companies that shut down to count their inventory. How much does it cost to shut down your plant to run around counting things? Poof, insane. So instead, you have a good Kanban system, you know where your Kanban quantities are, counting over. I just use the max quantity at all times, and that is, that's perfect. You never need anything more accurate than that. Like who cares if you have 2,000 screws or 1,750, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the last thing Kanban kind of helps with is, Especially as if you're if you're like manager owner, you're trying to get a deal on things all the time. That that I have a deal for you, you know. Or if, if you buy 700 of these things, boy, can I get you a deal? 
Man, we shut that stuff down now. Like it's just not worth saving the money because it causes such ruckus in the factory. We have nowhere to store it. We're storing it in different places. So your Kanban card comes up. Uh, you look, whoop, I'm making a mess. You look at the quantity. That's the quantity you order. Done deal. No thinking. We put all of the thinking on this card so that anyone can do it and do it perfectly every single time. So I think now we're going to uh, we're going to get into a little a, a demo here shortly. Um, I think I should just kind of go emphasize the fact that I know I just said anyone can order, but literally anyone can order. This is not hidden in someone's computer. You don't need a password. It's not you know if if. 85% of the company calls in sick and you need that thing. I literally can look at it. I can look at the phone number. I can call the vendor. I can give them the part number and it's on the way. My purchaser doesn't need to get involved. Always better to do it that way. But in a pinch, the point is that nobody needs to do this. Now we are going to have some computer geniuses in the audience. I'm, I'm almost certain of it. That's looking at this going, oh my God, I can automate this whole thing. We could get a Trello board. Da, da, da. Stop that train of thought. One, yes, there is digital Kanban. What we're talking about today is a manual Kanban and we want everybody to start here. There's a reason that this card is so valuable in the Kanban system. The reason is human brains, we're two dimensional. We need the thing and this is the thing, okay? I think the best example I heard, I have to give a shout out to my good buddy Michael from Yellow Tools. Last night we're talking about Kanban because, yeah, I guess the weather doesn't interest us. We talk about Kanban instead. Um, he said, listen, what happens when you drive somewhere with a GPS and you get there? Could you get there again without the GPS? And we all know the answer is no. So we use the computer to get us where we need to go and we can't do it again. But if you had a good old fashioned map that you had to highlight, look for landmarks, look around, you can get there again every time. So just believe me when I tell you, you want to do it manually before you automate into any kind of digital Kanban. And that's what we're gonna be focused on today. So uh, I think we're gonna jump right into our demo now. So I'm gonna elicit some help, the lovely Lori to join us and Shay. So we're gonna run a little Kanban system um, and I'm gonna be the worker. Lori is gonna be our purchaser slash receiver and Shay is gonna be our supplier. So we are going to get going. So as the worker, I'm gonna start consuming the thing. This bin is at my workstation. We're just gonna use knives because I don't know, that's what we pulled down. So I use the thing, in this case it's a knife. Now I look at my crumb trail that's taped in the bottom of my bin and I go into my Kanban storage area and I see, find my bins and I say, okay, here I am. I'm going to take my thing. I'm going to use it. Now I'm back at my workstation. I'm working. I'm using the thing. I come back and of course this could be days, weeks, whatever, but we're fast forwarding this for your benefit. Uh, I'm using the thing again. I come back. Bin is empty, no problem. I switch it around, and now the card's in the way. Ideally, your shelf is here. You really gotta make it so this thing is in the way or else people will just reach around it or whatever, you know, you know people. Um, so I take the card, and all I do now is this order board is posted somewhere in my work area. So I'm not going very far, or it's posted in the Kanban storage area. I just put that card in there. That's the signal for purchasing to do something. So now purchasing does something. I just grab my next knife. I start working and I'm working away. Lori's going to show you how easy the purchasing is with the QR codes. I'm going to scan the code. She's scanning Order. the code. Boom. Ordered. Done. Ordered. In the background, I'm still working. Our vendor delivers. Received. I put away. I go back to my area and there's another knife there. Perfect. I take it. I come back here. I'm working still. We're going to run through this a couple of times just for fun. Now I go back. My bin is empty. 
I move the bin forward, my card, I take the card, I submit it to purchasing. That starts this whole cycle in the background. I never stop working. I go back to my workstation. I'm still working away. Order. Lori orders it. Shea. Shea delivers it. I'm still working. It. We receive it. We put it back in the Kanban area. Another knife is ready. I come get it. I start using it. I go back. Bin is empty. Now, obviously we're cycling this really fast for, oh, card, got to move the card. Signals of purchasing. I keep working. They keep doing their magic. So you get the idea how this is working. And, you know, you're probably thinking, well, it's like, what an effort. Why don't you just buy 500 knives? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, we're going to show you the formula that's going to be, you're calculating all this based on a consumption rate and a reasonable time to replenish. So we just wanted to cycle it through fast so you could see I could keep working, staying focused on what I need to focus on. And all the other things are happening in the background with zero effort. All of that was happening just back and forth. So there's one other scenario that kind of we're going to touch quickly. And that this would be what we would consider an external Kanban card. So we're signaling to a vendor from the outside, it says external, that we want to buy this thing. Now, what if we build these in-house? This is what happens. We switch and we have an internal Kanban card. And you can make those different colors or do, do whatever you need to do uh, to signal that this is a build card now. So scenario still unfolds exactly the same. We're not going to run crazy through it. But let's say I consume all of these. We switch the bin around. My process is identical as the assembler or operator. I just see the card. I don't care. I just, bam, I just put it there. Done deal. And now I keep working. But what's happening in the background now is purchasing sees this is not a purchased item. This is triggering a work order. So now this is going to go out into the plant saying, we need to build more of these things. Shay's going to run back in the shop. She's going to build two more knives. And then she'll just put them back here. And it'll work exactly like a vendor, except for all of that will be triggered under one roof. Um, Okay, so demo over. Okay, and so we're going to talk a little bit about color coding. So we have the ability in our system to change the colors on the Kanban cards. And really, you're just limited to your imagination here. I'll give you some examples of how we use these. So you might color code them. We might say blue is office supplies. We might say uh, green is supplies for assemblies, screws, and glue, and things like that. Or we might say, and that just makes it easier for purchasing. They might want to group them together before they actually do the purchasing. Or we might say uh, gold is for a certain uh, vendor. So we might separate them by vendor. We might separate them by component type. Um, another great example of color coding would be if you're using them as an internal uh, uh, work in process uh, Kanban card, I'll give you an example. One of our customers use these for material types. So uh, this might be pine, blue might be maple, gold might be wormy maple. So they could tell at the very beginning of the process in the breakout department what materials were coming up. So the forklift driver that was supplying the saw, he would, he would be supplying the, the raw lumber. He would be scheduling what he was going to supply based on the types of cards he saw in there without even actually looking at the details. So um, you're really just limited to your imagination. Another one of our customers uses the Kanban cards for picking. Uh, we have a video up on YouTube for this. Uh, it would have been uh, uh, for picking at uh, Bunky Life. And they had a, a sea of cards to pick one order. And if the card was this gold color, it meant that somebody had to go and chop up the, the, the pieces. They still had to be cut. Everything else was, uh, if it was blue or green, they just go pick the finished component. Um, so we could tell by looking at this picking board, if we had a lot of labor uh, to do before we actually picked the parts, we would be able to schedule labor and get someone on that. So we'd, uh, we'd just turn them the other way after they had, they had cut them. So some really uh, genius ways to use the color coding. But again, it's up to you guys. Uh, sky's the limit. 
Um, so color coding is one way that you can, you can really add some extra value to the system. And uh, one of the, what, what could possibly go wrong with Kanban? So uh, one of the issues that we would have with Kanban is this card is incredibly important. There's nothing more important than this car. So if we have people in the building that have not been trained on what to do with a Kanban card, even if they don't get the materials or use the materials, we still want them to know what to do with this card. Because if this card is on the floor, I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna throw it on someone's desk. And what's gonna happen? It's not gonna get ordered. So we wanna make sure that everybody in the building, regardless of whether or not they handle these cards, they know how important they are and what to do with them. If you find it on the floor, you gotta take it to the person that's responsible for Kanban. They will do the investigation and find out where the card belongs, uh, which also reminds me we want one person responsible for your entire Kanban system because you're gonna be needing to check up on these every once in a while. Um, your vendor may change their lead time, which means you're gonna need to update your reorder point or your reorder quantity. And you're going to want to make sure that you're, you're keeping on top of that. And that's where this is also helping. If you don't know that they're intentionally changing their lead time, but they're just struggling, you'll see on the back of the card that you have some extended uh, vendor lead times. Um, so we want to make sure that we train everybody. We want to make sure we update the cards when anything changes in the process. It could be a seasonal change on the components, and you're definitely going to want to revisit that card again as well. Uh, we want a uh, dedicated station, which is a really good idea, which is what you see behind me here. Everything that we need to make this card is here. We have the computer logged into the system. We have the printer. We have the laminator. We have the cutter. So everything is here. I don't have to wander around and look for something. I don't have an excuse not to do the right thing at the right time because as soon as this needs to be remade, it needs to be remade, not six weeks from now when, when it's convenient for us. <laughs> where does Kanban uh, work well and where does Kanban not work well? So Kanban works really well for common components, consumables that we're using in the shop all the time. Kanban does not work well for job-specific custom materials. So I'm not going to worry about using Kanban for those uh, job-specific materials, but I'm going to use it for the sheet goods, for the, the common hinges, the screws, the glue, all that stuff. So common components is where we want to use Kanban. And uh, the custom stuff, we're just going to order that outside of that system. And uh, now I think I'm going to hand you off to Brad for the next, next section of the training. We're going to get into now the two types of storage areas for your Kanban. So we have what we would call a central storage area or a decentralized storage area. So that would mean, do I keep my, my whole Kanban system at the work center or do I keep it in a central area where we use this system with breadcrumbs? So this could actually, so if this was my work center, this could work too, right? We have our, we have our card and it, and it works exactly the same uh, in my work center, but then once the bin, like if this bin's empty, somebody has to come and fill this now. And whether it's your receiving department, they run around the plant, it, there's no right answer here. It's just which one is gonna work better for you. Uh, we've done both at my factory and everyone's watching, so we could take, we could take a vote, but I, I think the centralized Kanban by far is the, the better solution for us. If it's a smaller facility, it's a little bit easier. It's easy to get to all the workstations. But if you have a bigger facility, uh, you're covering a lot of miles, then it's going to be tough. It's easier to have the worker or a water spider go with a, with a crumb trail to your central storage area and get the parts. So those are the two ways to store your things. But now, when we get into the storage area itself, there's two more ways that you want to do that. One of them is what I would call like a coordinated system. And I think this is where probably most people lean towards where 
I don't, everybody has a different business, but let's just say it's, it's, it's all of your screws are in one area, and all of your tape is in another area, and all of your markers are in another area, and all of your cutters are in another area. And so when you go to these storage areas, usually, A, you don't have a Kanban system running, so you need that visual. You need to just go up in the thing, you want to look in the place and find out, oh, you know, where's the tape? And then you scan all the tape bins until you find the tape that you want. Not really ideal. The other way would be more of what I would call like a flexible bin storage. Um, bet we could demo that. So, oh, you know how we're going to demo that? Come with me. We're just going to go right up into the storage area and I'll show you. Now, there's, I don't know how many people on here, 50 or 60 people, and I don't want you all just staring at my butt the whole time I'm walking up the stairs, but. Ah, what the heck? You can. I don't mind. Let's go. Shem, follow us with that other camera. So this is like real time in, in my factory. Um, and we have what we would call the flexible storage where um, not every bin is A, it's not the same size. And there's absolutely no rhyme or reason to what is getting put anywhere. So you can see we have batteries beside cable ties, beside air fresheners for our trucks, beside scissors. There's no rhyme or reason to this, but what that allows us to do is every time we get a new item into our Kanban area, we just go um, to the next available spot and we put a bin, we put a lean label and we mark it. And so let me just find a card. Give you a little demo here. So our air fresheners. I look at the card. You probably won't be able to read this because I can't. Why don't we put on our spectacles? All right. Uh, shelf. A, A, black. So I go to my shelf, rack one, A, A. And we thought even just having the shelf um, yeah, we could search just one shelf and find it, and it'll be okay. But one of our geniuses here, I think this was Kyla, came up with, let's paint the shelf four different colors so we can reference the color as well. And so we go rack one, shelf A, shelf A, and black. We know now we're down to one foot, and we can find the item we're looking for right there. So that is how we do our flexible storage. And then... That allows us just to put the next available bin um, in line, and we're and there's no worry about where it is. We don't. It just it just disappears in the warehouse. So if you come up here without a crumb trail or without a Kanban card, you're in trouble. You're not finding anything, which we demoed earlier. However, let's say you're Brad on the weekend. This never happens. Um, so I'm in here on the weekend and I'm looking for something. And the first thing I do is I come up here and I search around and then I get angry cause I can't find it. And I'm like, oh yeah, Vance created this genius thing right here at our Kanban station where we just pull it up on the iPad somehow. Uh, none of it's on. This is a problem with live demos. Anyway, I'm sure you're going to get the idea. All we have to do is search now for what I'm looking for. I type in batteries and it'll show me all the Kanban locations that have batteries. And then I look for the battery I'm looking for and then it'll tell me rack two shelf a gray and I'll just go rack two shelf a gray. So that's how we've done most of our supplies. And I think we love it. Do we love it? <laughs> we love it. <laughs> can always count on shaver jump it in okay so that's the storage area flexible i think we covered that uh let's go back downstairs and talk about other things to do with kanban okay so back in action one more thing is i want to talk about the bins because for sure 50 of you on this call are lean maniacs and you looked up at our at our kanban area and you're like oh my god it looks like poop and i'm eh, we have this debate all the time and so What's happening up there is is this is we have um, 
the other the other fun thing we do is we Kanban our bins, so we never have to look for bins. But let's just say we've got th this. This is kind of what's happening up there, and these bins could be beside each other. Like it could be like this. This is a decision you have to make for yourself: fit or function, fashion or function beside each other. Like it could be like this. Because they're right size, the bins are right size. The large items will go in here, the small items will go in here. Uh, you get the idea, but when you stand back and look at it, it's like, bah, you know, it doesn't look good. So the Kanban area would look orders of magnitude better if all of the bins were the same size. And you, you, if you have the space, I mean, you can't beat it. Like go zoom, the, Google some like, fast cap, seating matters, um, yellow tools, like it's, it's amazing. So we just went, because of our condensed space, we just said, we're right sizing and it's gonna look not as good, but the fit and function is phenomenal. So we, we've still eliminated all the searching. It just doesn't look as pretty as we want it to. Uh, one day we'll have the biggest building in the world and we can do whatever we want. But until that day comes, we're here, and we choose function over fashion. Uh, okay, so you're wondering, what do we do with buckets or big items that we can't do a two-bin system? So for the record, two-bin system, when you have two bins that cycle back and forth, the best. It's like no one's thinking. The receiving comes in, they dump it in the empty bin, they're out of there. The operators never have to do anything. Two bin system, if you can do it, ideal. Next best thing, and this comes into play with like, um, I would say like office supplies and so, oh, our screws. So this is the next best option. You have one bin, but inside the bin, you have your Kanban quantity attached to the card. So you can see there's a bunch of screws in there. We're gonna use those first, and then when those are gone and we need to use this, that's when we take that card and we would submit it to purchasing and then it comes in most of the inventory would go in the bin the balance of it would get then attached to the card according to what it says and then you do that and you're back in action so that's the second way to do it and then with bulk items this is really expensive but you're gonna love it uh, we use painter's tape and a Sharpie. The expensive part was a joke for those of you who didn't laugh. Nobody laughed. Like, nobody here laughed. So, whoops. Uh, so anyway, don't be shy. Just take a pail, mark it, and then you can have your card just like sitting on top of the pail or wherever. Tape it. Tape it here. There's no rules. The only rule is this gets submitted at the right time. And so... You have it there when, the, when it gets down to the line, submit the card, keep working. So that's how I would handle buckets or big items, barrels, cartons. Um, Want to go on another tour? Follow? <laughs> Look at Vance is like, yeah, dude, my cameraman's like, let's tour. <laughs> so uh, let's give you an example of that. We're going to follow. Let's go right into the bathroom here. Shem, why don't you follow us with that other camera? Oh, how about that for habit? That's my habit. So we have one bathroom, and so boys and girls, so this is kind of cool. So as I was coming in, I just switched it to being a boy. Um, okay, so welcome to our bathroom. We get a 30-second bathroom tour. We have the cleanest bathrooms in the entire world, except for Yellow Tools, Fast Cap, Seating Matters, Torre, Climb Easy, all the other guys that do lean at a, at a half-decent level. Um, and we love it. Look at that. Beautiful. Spotless. All the time. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. This is a Kanban tour. So in this case, for example, um, we have our toilet paper comes in in these boxes and I can see the Kanban card is there. So when we get to this level, we submit the Kanban card, another box will come in, we just put it here and these would cycle around. Same with tissue paper, Kanban card just sitting there, pull it when we get there, submitted. So we're not using bins in this case, we're using the packaging things are in. Same with uh, all of this stuff. We've got our lean labels, gloves, Clorox. There's the Kanban card for this. When we get to that level, we pull that. So you get the idea. 
Um, it doesn't have to be in bins. It could be packaging. Like I said, there's no rules. Remember, Kanban just means sign or signal. So that's it. We're just trying to give purchasing the signal to do something. They're going to give the vendor the signal and the thing just keeps going. So let's get out of the bathroom. Vance just made that last week. Isn't it cool? And JP. I know everybody's chomping at the bit to get out of this meeting so you can go set up your Kanban system and I'm excited for you. So where do you start? Where you want to start is where we just were. Just do the simple stuff. Attack your bathroom supplies. Attack your office supplies. What time is it? Do we have time to show office supplies? Here we go. Look, this is great. Everyone opens the doors for me when I'm on camera. That's our sanding robot. Super cool. Okay, not what we're here for. Um, so this is all of our office supplies for the whole building are all just in these little bins right here, and they all run on that same principle of like buy some highlighters. These are attached to the card. These aren't, and everything is on, is tracked on there. Look at that. We even track our vendor performance on Sharpies, which is probably Amazon. So it's probably pretty good. They seem to got it figured out. So anyway, exact same blue pens, red pens, bins, easy, small. Like some people have whole storage rooms dedicated to their office supplies. And it's crazy. You don't need that many. Um, and yep, that's it. Office supplies. Good. Thanks for joining me on that little tour. Let's go back out there. Start with the office supplies and bathroom supplies because why? One, it's cheap. It's not gonna bankrupt you to run out of pens or, you know, but most people are, are taking it like, oh, well, they're pens. I'll just buy 10,000 of them, who cares? Treat it like a game. Treat it like, how low can we go without running out? That's, that's the game. And we're gonna practice that with things that cost 10 cents, not before you go to the factory. Because if you can't manage toilet paper and pens, then believe me, don't go screw up your whole business. It's, it's running right now without you wrecking it. So just let it do its thing, but get the office supplies, bathroom supplies, make the shelves beautiful, learn all the lessons you need to learn with supply and vendor and purchasing, and then rock and roll and get this thing out to your whole factory. So I think we're going to now make a card for you. Just making a Kanban card. You come to the Kanban station, Ideally, you have a little uh, laptop or what we call crap tops because when they break, we just replace them. Um, and you just start creating creating the card. Now, you can create a card however you want. Um, but generally speaking, uh, for, for my company anyway, we don't see the point in messing around in Word or Excel. Um, you can just go straight to a quantum lean website and all of these tools are available for you to create perfect Kanban cards every time we store them in the cloud we store revisions so they're easy to revise and that's another thing we'll warn you quickly is that your cards are going to need revisions so however you set up your system uh, make sure they're easy to revise because you will get it wrong the first time or your vendor will screw up or something will happen and we're walking through the formula oh okay so lynn told me now we're walking through the formula so the formula is consumption rate times reasonable time to replenish times safety stock plus safety stock sorry um and then you get a reorder at quantity the system will automatically uh, generate that for you if you use ours. Uh, if not, you just calculate it yourself. And then you make the card and change the quantity. done deal. You can change quantities if you want. You can change the reorder quantity if you want. You could, you could modify it in any way. The system will suggest things, but you do what you see fit. And then, <clears throat> of course, the QR code is the magic here because you can just put a scanner at your purchasing station and just just like at the grocery store, it's like boop, 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 and the things are getting sent to your purchasers. So when we print the card, um, 
you also get our crumb trail card and you also get labels for all of your shelves. So it makes it really, really hard to not get organized when someone comes to you with uh, an item that they want to put away in the Kanban area and you don't have a card yet. You just come in here, you make a card, and then you're getting the shelf label, you're getting the crumb trail card, you're getting everything, and you can revise them with the click of a button so that you're doing the right thing every single time. It's not like, oh, we'll get to that later. Because in the wise words of my friend Ashley Bailey, he said, if today's me doesn't have time, what makes me think tomorrow's me is going to have time? So oh, that's that's it. Uh, oh, they come in different sizes too. Uh, I don't know what what we're doing. Just showing that the revision is there now. Oh yeah, the revision. There it is. So we view the revision, and you can change the layout of the card. If that square card doesn't uh, tickle your fancy, you can make it a long elongated card, and you can change the colors all in a click of a button. So you can change for department or parts or whatever you see fit in terms of creating that card. Also, because we're super technical, it will print on the back of that piece of paper, it will print the back of the card in the exact same spot as the front of the card. And then when you laminate it, yeah, you're done. Talk about on the money. So we're ready to open up the floor for some questions. If anybody wants to chime in, tell us, Anything, ask a question or just like, what are you struggling with? Or tell us a little bit about your business and what kind of stuff you're trying to uh, put a Kanban card or you'd like to, or, or what the heck you're doing here in the first place. Let's, let's just open up the floor to some conversation. And usually when we do this, it's just like an influx of people. So not everyone at once, but maybe someone could start this off. And Lori will tell me if there's any questions or any people. Do you have everyone muted? Yep. Can I ask a question? No, no questions. Okay, kidding. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, Brad, first of all, great demo. Um, I was Thank wondering you. how does it normally tie in with, with like the accounting system? Um, I, maybe that's like too deep for this this video, but I find that um all the invoices and stuff like that, it kind of all it, it's all messy on the back end. So like my card system has been working great because I already have a Kanban system in play, but our invoicing and everything like that, all the invoices that get logged in. Do you, do you have any little tips on that or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, OK, so how I can tell you how we we would do it and then I, I hope it helps. But yeah, this this doesn't circumvent your your ERP or your accounting system. This again is just a signal that's saying, please buy this thing. So as a purchaser, I don't just beep the thing and buy it. I still go into my system. I still create a PO. I still send that PO to the vendor. Um, depending on which vendor, you can make that QR code. I mean, this day and age, you can make it do anything. So in, in our case, I know with our material vendors, we scan that code and it creates a PO and sends it to the vendor. So we're not we're not circumventing the accounting or ERP system, but we're just using the card as a physical signal that please do this thing. So, so do you order everything like with purchase orders or sometimes would whoever's yes. purchasing just buy stuff from a web page? No. And ah, okay, so right. yes, we do buy we buy lots of things from web pages, but we create a purchase order even for the things we buy off the web page. We then print that thing out like an Amazon, like they're the most confusing. So you print their stuff out and we write the PO number on it. And then that then goes to accounting and the card still continues to cycle around the factory. Okay. Okay. And sorry, just on a one liner, a purchase order is basically anything internally that describes what you're purchasing. Is it? Or a product? Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah I mean, and so it much. can be as simple as an Excel spreadsheet that just tracks the number and what what they're doing. Make sure you got it. Make sure the person who ordered it agrees with the price and make sure you got the invoice or throw it into your ERP and it'll sure. go from there. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brad. No problem. Uh, Lori, we have another question. Wonderful question. When you're using two bins, is the quantity the same? Yes. 
yes, yes, yes. Um, that just makes everything so much easier. So we, could, we can do a quick example of that. So if we have our two-bin system and uh, the, let's just say the reorder quantity is four and your, or sorry, the, yeah, the purchase quantity is four, but you're triggering it at two, okay? Then what's going to end up happening is when these get used, you order in four, but now you have to trigger it at two, which is going to be, which is going to force you into the person receiving is going to have to start separating things into different bins, or they're going to have to put two with the elastic band and the other two in here, which could work. Um, no problem there, other than the whole point of, you know, the whole point of lean or making things is just simple, simple, simple. So for my preferences, I don't want my receiving people thinking about it. I just want them walk into the bin, empty bin, box from the vendor, done deal. And that's why in our system you can change the reorder quantities because maybe you're supposed to buy, like by the formula, you're supposed to buy seven, but they come in a case of 12. Eh, buy 12 and just dump the case in the thing. And so on the surface, it might seem like your Kanban system is actually increasing your inventory because you're actually buying more, like you could get away with using less. But the rule number one is don't run out of anything. I mean, you know, you want to, you want to see how important it is for any factory to run out of something, run out of toilet paper. Any other questions? Okay, yes. Engineering changes. Okay, so how would your Kanban system change if you have a product that's going at end of life? Again, this is just your sign or signal. So what I might do is when we're, this one's running out, I'm going to grab that. Dang, I keep losing my Sharpie. I should, no, I don't. It's here. I'm going to just go and grab a Sharpie. And I'm going to find that card and I'm going to write on, do not order again, engineering change, C part number, like whatever information you need, just scribble it on the front and then put it back. And then your team, when it cycles to the front and they get the card that says, hey, do not order, it's still not up to them to, to do anything. They're still going to take that card and just put it into the slot requesting purchasing but then when it gets into the office, they'll see, hey, we're not going to order this one again. Reference the new engineering part, something like that. Does that help? Any more? Why don't we go on a little tour? We just happen to have sheet goods here. Does anyone want to go for a little run? Okay, so here's where we store our sheet goods. And you can see... Uh, here at our factory, we keep a really low inventory, especially of three quarter. <laughs> but you can see the card has been pulled. So this is how we manage this. Our Kanban card will tell us the quantity, and then we mark the lift when it gets to the Kanban quantity. We pull the card, submit it to purchasing, and then we have one of these hanging at each and every location. Here's our three eighths and then, and then over here. And remember the Kanban's are just for your consumable stuff you go through all the time. We wouldn't have a Kanban for anything that's purchased just once. So that's how we manage our sheet goods. Same with Kanban cards and they just cycle up to the front and someone orders them and it shows up, works great. Maybe we'll do our next uh, demo on our on SOPs. Look at this. Isn't this awesome? We have crumb trails everywhere. We don't look for anything. We don't struggle for anything. Fantastic. Okay. Carry on. Any more questions, Lori? Not yet. Not yet. How are we doing for time? Explain the shirt. No Kaizen. Pardon? Explain that shirt. No Kaizen. Where? Lynn's. Oh. Well, we won't zoom right in on it or anything. We'll just know that it says no standard. <laughs> no one asked about my shirt. Oh, whatever. 
uh, no standards, no Kaizen. Oh my God, this is the basis of all lean manufacturing. So without, this, without a standard, you can't make an improvement. So Kaizen's just, you know, change for the better. So no standards, no change for the better. So unless you standardize a process, there's no possible way you could ever improve it. And thanks for asking. My shirt says uh, where the question is, the answer should be, which I wasn't an accident. I wore it today with because of Kanban. So, you know, all our questions are where are our sorry, our answers are where the questions are. When you when you have a bin and you're like, where do I get more of this thing? Where's the answer? Right there at the bottom of the bin. When you're like, where do I get this thing? There's the answer. When you get up to the shelf and you look at it, you get the idea. Any more questions? What? All right. Uh, what time is it? The only thing left to do is dance. No, that, that was not going to happen. Okay, so we have three minutes. Does anyone want to jump in and give us some hints for... Can someone please tell us if we did a half-decent job? Was this okay? I thought it was great. Yeah. Great. Yes. Thank you. It was super easy to put on. We barely practiced. We had almost no one involved. Turn around. You'll, you'll see. This is like, this is a production for us. Standing robot. Awesome. But like, we got cameras and people and. <laughs> hey guys. Um, so what about, is there anything anyone wants us to do next? Give us some ideas. What do you guys want to do? The I'm SOP that you mentioned will be great in the next one. All right, we can do that. We we got yeah, ask your question, but here's in the meantime, we got SOPs for for everything and these are like generated super easy and fast in our system because we don't like wasting time. Ask your question, go ahead. Okay. Um so what system are you using to uh generate the purchase order and send that in from the Kanban card? Oh, uh, that's just uh that's our but like that's just an ERP system like ours is. I'll give them a plug. Ours is all Moxie, um, but take your pick, right? It's there's everyone has a different one. How often do you lose the Kanban cards? Well, that is the only challenge. And as Lynn talked about a little bit earlier, is like when this goes missing, you're in trouble, right? So if if this just like falls on the floor. Someone has to see it and be like, oh, and this would be a good thing to have a little procedure for like, oh, I found a card. What do I do with it? Because if I go here and I put it here, someone's going to buy it. But maybe we just bought it and it fell off on the way in. If I put it here, mm -hmm. someone's going to think we've ordered it. So you got to have a... Maybe, Hey, maybe we should do this, Lynn. Another little bin on our thing for lost or misplaced Kanban cards. They go there, and then the purchaser collects them at the same time, gets to the bottom of the lost or missing ones. That's why we do these things, because we get so many good ideas. Great ideas. Those seem to change. end up underneath the shelf, so we never do find it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. That, that does happen. It does happen. Uh, and the only way around that is training, training, training. Yeah. Uh, and you know, a little bit of situational awareness. If you're going to a bin beside another one and you don't see the card, like have a clue, but yeah, it, it happens. It's not perfect, but okay. any other questions coming in? Yes. Hey, Brett, uh, Mike. Hi. Mike, question to you here. Um, I just wanted to share with you guys, um, uh, we we used to uh, I tried to uh, to use something similar to your system with the sheet goods, so mm -hmm. and then I figured out that like when we mark uh, at the bottom like a five sheets or ten sheets, people would forget to order and we still run out of material and Kanban cart is sitting there and uh, we you are to the last sheet and then like I need plywood, so mm -hmm. we come up to this like this is just a big yellow piece of paper. It says Kanban, and we figured out, place it like five sheets from the bottom of the unit, just stick it there. So when people are using material, they just see the big piece yellow paper. So you've got to do something with it. So that's kind of pokayoke. So it's 
almost impossible to make mistakes now. Just wanted yeah. to share. Yeah, it looks like it works now. So yeah, that's great. And and I mean, the the easier you can make it, the more it will get used. There's no yeah. doubt about it. If and and remember the blame the process, not the person. If if someone's if you're if your Kanban, if you have a certain Kanban that keeps screwing up, well, figure it out. Like like it's too hard. It's too hard, or it's too easy to avoid. So just there's no right answers. Just you know, do what works. Yeah, same thing with the slots. You you have a, a very next to the materials to be ordered. The materials on order on your <clears throat> on your system. They're next to each yeah. other. My guys, yes. they would switch, switch them, and it was mess. <laughs> well, so, we did you know, we did take the time to label it. So uh, I mean, it's like yeah, I hear you, but. I'll, yeah, I'll share the picture of that area. And then I just forget about it. And the items on order actually sitting in the office until order comes. And then they just go back on the shelf. And Kanban cart never comes even near this area of items right. to be ordered. So if the cart is there, it is something to be ordered. Okay. And that's a great way to do it. Um, the only reason we do it this way is for a visual that the operators in the area are not worried about, did it get ordered, did it get forgotten? It's a visual signal that says, I put it here, and then it reappeared here. So as the operator, I stop thinking about it. I know it's ordered. If I don't see it there, maybe I remember three days ago, I submitted that card. I'm like, hey, I don't see it here. And then maybe that would come up at the morning meeting and just say, hey, I thought I ordered knives. Is the card lost or is there an issue? Um, so it's just a visual, you know, they say you're not lean till you're visual. So that's that's why we do it this way. But if you have a system that's working, like, run with it. All right. Well, thank you. A great presentation. Amy. All right. Time's up. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can chase, chase us down at quantumlean.ca. We love answering questions and getting emails. So don't be shy. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.